So you're looking for some tips and tricks on crafting in Starfield? Want to have your Eon look like this? Or your Grendel look like this? Maybe you want to soup up your new Maelstrom or Deadeye? Well, definitely look no further than this crafting and research guide. What's going on YouTube? It's Chris here from Friendly Frenzy Games and today we're going to let you in on a few things that we've learned after numerous hours of time spent in game. Now we've built this guide on some questions that we'd encountered and solved ourselves so hopefully this is going to help you too. Follow along until the end and if you learned something, like this video and subscribe to Friendly Frenzy Games for many more helpful guides just like this one. Now let's get into it. Chances are if you're watching this video, you're very likely not starting from scratch, but we still promise that this skill point section will help. However, if you are starting new or you're starting over and you want to craft as soon as possible, you're going to want to choose the professor background and here's why. So the professor is the only background to start with three points into the research skill tree at the beginning of the game. Now these are skills with the blue backgrounds. You're going to need at least four before you can place your first skill point into weapon crafting and this is in the second tier of the research tree. Admittedly for the professor, astrodynamics aren't going to help you so much but it is one less skill point that you're ultimately going to need to spend to get to crafting early. The geology skill helps you gather non-organic resources like minerals quicker, whereas research methods will save you some time when completing recipes because this reduces the researching and crafting requirements for each recipe. The surveying research skill is another fantastic one to place a skill point into as it doesn't come preloaded on the professor, but it allows you to scan resources and identify materials from further away and this is really going to help you identify more quickly what is best to collect. Now of course there are some alternatives if you're looking for a more balanced background here. Explorer, Homesteader, and Sculptor all start with two skill points in the research skill tree, however their skills aren't necessarily the most ideal for quick crafting. As the best alternative to Professor, we would likely take Homesteader as the geology skill is second most helpful for crafting and the additional weightlifting skill will also give you increased carrying capacity. This is important because you're going to be carrying a lot of resources and the mass adds up very very quickly. Since we're all set up with our skill points now, let's talk about research. Using research stations all throughout Starfield, you'll be able to unlock new crafting recipes for things like pharmaceuticals, your outpost, and equipment. We're going to focus on weapon engineering in this guide, but the fundamentals here are applied to any and all other projects just the same. If you're looking to research on the fly, there is a research station conveniently installed for you on the first ship in the game, the Frontier. If you're just boarding the ship, you'll find it nestled halfway up and on the left of the cockpit. It should be mentioned that even without the weapon engineering skill unlocked, you are still able to craft the most basic weapon modifications, but you will still need to research these projects first to have them be craftable components. To research, simply choose what area you're wanting to discover and then choose a project to commit any resources that you've currently got in your inventory or in your ship's inventory. You'll know that you have the proper materials to fulfill at least part of a project if the title of it is marked by the yellow detailing. You may choose how many of a single resource to commit to a project and if you fulfill its requirement that resource will be marked as complete until the entire project has been researched. If you've started research progress on a project that you haven't yet completed, it'll also show on the main research menu that the project is currently in progress. Now one of the single biggest tips that we have for researching and crafting is to make use of the tracking feature. This is something that took us quite a while to learn even though it's blatantly laid out for you, but this will highlight all of the required ingredients for a certain project while you're out exploring in the world. This very quickly helps you identify the resources that are going to be the most important for you to collect for your current progression, and then you can track multiple projects at the same time if you so wish. If you're lucky, while researching, because this does not apply to crafting, you'll receive a sudden development while committing resources. This random event is going to cause a resource overflow and automatically generates and applies other resources for your current project. If you're really lucky, this can sometimes even also complete the project outright. When you're new in this game, the amount of loot that's available for pickup is overwhelming, but not all of it is actually worth picking up. Things like vacuum tape that might sound like a crafting ingredient actually is not. 
Items of no real crafting significance won't have additional text in their description window, which is helpful to know before you pick an item up. If you do happen to pick up an item that isn't really going to do much for crafting, it'll end up in the miscellaneous area of your inventory. Other items though, like organic and inorganic crafting materials, can be found loosely throughout the world or in containers, dung piles, or even dead bodies. All of these materials that you'll be able to use for crafting will display in your resources inventory tab upon pickup. Notice in these clips here as well, the little tracking icon beside the sealant that we had recommended in the previous section also. Again, just an extremely useful tool to highlight items that may otherwise easily be missed. Another good method for acquiring an abundant variety of resources Both if you have the credits and you're in town is to visit an NPC to... and check their resource inventory on the buy tab. I hope we Here have... you can purchase as many items as you have the credit for or obviously as long as they have a proper inventory of. It's a quick and easy way to sometimes find those materials that require some additional effort or just seem to be eluding you. On top of that, there's even the option to craft some of the more complex crafting materials like an adaptive frame or comm relay. Although these can be found and purchased, sometimes it's cheaper or more convenient to do it yourself to complete a recipe. These can be crafted while using an industrial workbench. Lastly, although it's very similar to scouring the environment for those loose materials, you'll also be able to survey and explore the different planets. Killing fauna and looting their bodies will grant you specific organic materials, whereas navigating and scanning the terrain will let you use your cutter to extract inorganic materials from the deposits. While on each planet, you're going to want to be sure to scan for and explore caves when and where possible, as these often bear minerals that aren't necessarily listed on the planet's resources menu, and they are typically quite rare. The colored dots will allow you to determine the rarity of a material. No dots means that it's quite common. A single blue dot is more rare. Two purple dots is epic. And three orange dots is a top tier legendary resource. While exploring planets, you're very likely to become bogged down in resources quite quickly, which ultimately increases your mass and may even prevent you from being able to fast travel back to your ship. Not only that, but this can also cause you damage to your health for prolonged sprinting while over encumbered. For this, our single biggest tip is to use the storage on your ship to store all of the resources between your runs. This is going to keep you free and nimble. Your introductory ship, the Frontier, can hold up to 450 pounds or kilos. This is going to serve as more than enough storage while you're hopping from planet to planet to collect the resources that you'll so desperately require before crafting at a workbench. Now that you're all set up with the basics of researching, let's talk about crafting. It's really very similar to research in that you'll need the required skills and materials to complete the recipes. However, as we'd mentioned previously, you won't be able to craft without having researched the items first. Also, just remember there is no chance for resource overflow in crafting. Our recommendation, especially in the early game, is to do all of your crafting at the lodge in the mass district of New Atlantis, which is the first main planet. Now you're going to need to have completed one small step main story mission to receive the key that unlocks the basement of the lodge, but after you have access you'll notice that every single workbench, crafting table, and research station are located in one small area. There's obviously many benefits to crafting here, with the main one being the closeness of all of the other crafting and research stations to each other. This is single-handedly going to increase the efficiency at which you're able to research projects and craft components. Other benefits would include a nearby NPC at the UC distribution. This is going to help you sell resources and buy resources to quickly make up any gaps for a specific project that you're looking to complete. Another benefit of crafting here is its proximity to the NAT station and the train. Now this is mainly because we would highly recommend that each time you land at New Atlantis, you're going to take all of your resources that you've collected and stored in your ship's cargo with you to the lodge. This is obviously going to be a very slow run in which you'll deplete a lot of oxygen, but the train helps to bridge this gap exponentially. The main reason for taking these resources with you each time leads us to the second biggest benefit of this work area, being the small storage container behind the research station. 
Now this is huge because it carries a limitless number of materials. Although your crafting recipes can't pull directly from the storage container like it does from your personal or ship inventory, you can quickly and easily transfer all of the resources from inside the storage container to your personal inventory and then move around to the different crafting stations as necessary. Once you're ready to leave, all you need to do is transfer all of the unused resources back to that same storage container and you can fast travel to the frontier. Now you're ready to collect all over again with a fresh and empty inventory. As we mentioned earlier, you are able to craft the most basic components without needing the weapon engineering skill unlocked, but because you're likely wanting many more higher grade options is why we would recommend having your tier 1 research points placed as early as possible. Now working towards the level 1 challenge for research methods and then placing a skill point for a higher benefit is much more beneficial for crafting than getting a point in medicine or spending it on any other tier 1 research skill. Remember you do need to reach a 4 point threshold to be able to unlock tier 2 which is where the weapon engineering skill is. After weapon engineering is unlocked, you'll notice immediately at the research station that some of the previously blocked projects are now available for research. Once you're able to fulfill these requirements, you're able to craft the higher quality modifications at the weapon station. As a final note here, while crafting, you may notice that each weapon has a spot for skins. Now, we personally haven't found any. This seems to definitely be more of a spot for those who had pre-ordered to be able to equip skins, but Here's to hoping that there are some available in the future with patches and updates. So that's pretty much it everybody. Hopefully you're feeling better equipped to tackling crafting in this game. Truly a lot of what it takes to craft is done through research so just be mindful of the tips and tricks that we shared with you and you will be making your own personalized weapons and gear in no time. If you enjoyed this video, if you learned something with us today, do us a favor and drop a like, maybe a comment as well. If you really liked it, don't forget to subscribe to Friendly Frenzy Games on YouTube for many more helpful game guides just like this one.